God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. In God I trust, and His name is Jesus Christ. I know for a fact that the events of Las Vegas I know just like you in Daytona Beach, Florida, they have a street preacher that preaches the gospel just as much as I do. And there were many souls that went off into eternity. They have gone to heaven by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, or they have gone to hell by rejecting Jesus Christ. As much as this is Las Vegas, it's the same thing Daytona Beach. You will face death. You do not know when death will come. And if you die without Jesus Christ, you will burn in a lake of fire that burneth forever. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll enter into the gates of heaven for Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You say, well, what good does your preaching have? Why do you do what you do every week? So people, when they see us show up, they say, here's that man, and he's going to quote the Scriptures. He's going to tell us about God. There he is. You have in your hearts and on your tongues the gospel God, Jesus Christ, when we show up. And that's a great testimony. If you were to believe on God and Jesus Christ His Son, it'd be a shame for you to say hallelujah and start quoting the Bible and not know God and not know Jesus Christ and hear week after week that Jesus saves and yet believe on Him. Hallelujah, praise God and Jesus, all that, without the saving grace, without the belief in your heart, you're just as much as a hypocrite. That's not going to get you to heaven. There are people that take the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in vain, and that's one of the commandments that is violated. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. And when you use the name of Jesus Christ without any purpose in a form of mockery, that is taking the Lord's name in vain. It doesn't have to be just a cuss. And yet the very fact is true today to those that right now that can hear this voice that the gospel is Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Many people have died. Many religious leaders have died. Many political figures have died. But they did not die according to the scriptures. That's what sets Jesus Christ apart from man. For all have sinned, come short of the glory of God, and yet Jesus Christ has never sinned. Jesus Christ has never done wrong. And I can take your favorite political figure, I can take your favorite preacher, I can take your favorite religion, I can show you sin. And I can bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ and show you no sin at all. I can bring Jesus Christ, as the Roman government said, I find no fault in Him. I can find even in the devil saying that blood is the innocent blood. Jesus Christ the sinless. Jesus Christ God. Jesus Christ the Son of God, the Savior. The one sent by God for you to be saved and only by Jesus Christ. It's simple to go to hell. Just do whatever you want to do. Go with the flow. Go with America. Go with religion. Go with whatever you want to do. Just don't do it with Jesus Christ. And you'll go to hell. That's plain and simple. To get to God, to get to glory, to get to heaven, you need the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And I don't care you don't like it. I don't care you don't like to hear this message. The Bible said you want it. And yet there are some of your customers that do enjoy the gospel being preached. And your constitution says I have the right to do what I'm doing. 
Your Supreme Court has ruled that street preaching is legal, street preaching is right. And as long as right, even if it became illegal, I'd still preach the gospel. Because the gospel is that Jesus is able to say that he was buried, as you would do with any dead man. You bury him to get rid of him. Get rid of the stink, get rid of the decaying. And yet before the body would decompose, before the body would begin to corrupt, Jesus arose the third day, according to the Scriptures. Not one of your political figures, not one of your religious people have ever rose from the grave like Jesus Christ has rose. The popes are still in the grave. The presidents are still in the grave. Allah is still in the grave. Dead. Muhammad in the grave, dead. Jesus Christ up from the grave, seated at the right hand of the Father, the only one that can save your soul. And when you say, well, I can do this. I've got these works that will get me into heaven. Then you're proclaiming you are better than Jesus Christ. You are telling God that what I can do is better than what your son has done for salvation. My money's more important than Calvary. My church attendance is more important than the gospel. My church is more important than the name of Jesus Christ. My, reli my religious leadership is better than the name of Jesus. Because their name flashes across the television set with a toll-free number to have you call and give, 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 give. And yet, the name of Jesus Christ, according to Isaiah chapter 1, verse 13, God says, come, 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 come. Let us reason together. God says, leave your money at home. Leave your works behind. Come to Jesus Christ, my son, and be saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. We don't have no offering plate here, no offering box. We are here for you to hear about Jesus Christ and for you to be saved. Because you're going to die. The wages of sin is death. You will die because you are a sinner. All will die. And yet Jesus Christ, God, gave up the ghost upon the cross. But before that, he suffered and died according to Isaiah 53 because of our iniquities. He suffered and died that man may have that blessed hope. There is no other man, no other woman in this planet who's ever died for hope of eternal life. Now you may die to give America freedom. I don't see that freedom in taxation. But no soldier has ever given their life for you to have eternal life. Now I thank our vets, I thank our, our military people, but you have not died to save my soul. And the greatest military man ever to be fought on this world is Jesus Christ and Satan and death. And he got it victorious. No soldier has ever come up from the grave but Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ being resurrected the third day, the third night, shows that He is God. Now there are religions out there saying that Jesus was supposed to come back in 1914, but 1954, two weeks to go on a Saturday, the world was supposed to end, they are false prophets. But I will tell you, without a date and without a time, Jesus is coming. And the Bible says, no man knoweth but God Himself, and those are the words of Jesus. And the Bible said there would be deceivers. And when I say Jesus is coming, that is Bible doctrine, but to give you a date and time, I'd be a liar. What message would I have for you about Jesus coming? You better get saved before He comes. You better get saved before death comes. This country is in a dire strait with Satan and death. As 
about speaking right now, there could be another tragedy in this country. And I'm not here to preach about guns, I'm here to preach about the blood of Jesus. And one of those tragic events could be right here in Daytona Beach. I hope it's not, but all these places in America, people don't hope that such things will happen, and then they do. Tragedy. And tragedy of someone picking up a gun and killing mass of people, people coming up with a bomb, killing people, it's because you have told God and Jesus Christ in the Word, I don't want you. You are preaching evolution in the schools. No God, so what do you expect? They're all monkey men. They're all survival of the fittest. That's what you've been teaching our children. So stop complaining about what your children are doing today. That's what you've been teaching. Evolution has no love. It has no hope. It has no peace. And yet those are the fruit of the Holy Spirit. You have been telling our children that this textbook says this, and two years later, now this textbook says this. And two more years, this textbook says this. And yet I still preach and live the King James 1611 Bible that has been wrought from the apostles, has been wrought from the mouth of Jesus Christ and the apostles of the Old Testament. That book right there, God's book, has not changed. The Word of God says, unless you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will not be saved. He that has the Son has eternal life. He that has not the Son shall not be life, but the wrath of God abiding upon him. Death is coming. That is sure. Death is more sure than death. And what you do before you die. See, once you die, there's nothing else you can do. Nobody can burn candles for you. No one can say prayers for you. Prayers for the dead are dead. According to the Bible. According to the Bible, once your soul passes off in eternity, it does not come back. It will not come back. And a man that is in hell, according to Jesus Christ, said, Will you go tell my family about this place of torture, about this place of torment, about this place of pain and sorrow? He never got out. And neither will you. For the Word of God is the voice of God that you need to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. Salvation is in no other. There is no means, no way to get to heaven outside of Jesus Christ. Don't even think about it. Don't even put it upon your mind that whatever I'm doing outside of Jesus Christ will be saved. Because God has set the standard in His Son. The virgin birth, the Jewish Messiah, is the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no access to God without the Son, Jesus Christ. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, for I have believed on the Son of God. I have believed on the means of God. I have believed on the way of God. Who that hear the gospel? There are two options for you today. In glory, you will say, Hallelujah, thank you for preaching. Or in hell, you'd be wishing I had listened to that man. I wish I had listened to his word. I wish I had never mocked. I wish I had never rebelled against that preaching. Two options today. Because we're not guaranteed of tomorrow. People die with a to-do list.
live. Yes, we all do. God doesn't want any of us there. The South is I'm going to do this, and death may interrupt. I'll believe on Jesus, but I'll believe on the Bible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. 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 Yeah, that's what
And the most important thing besides that, how many of your names are written in Lamb's Book of Life? That right here, if there would be a tragic event called death, how many of us right now would be absent from the body and present with the Lord? And yet, how many of you would be waking up in hell? I'll tell you what the answer is. The Bible told me. You ready? It says, many of you. For many will go the broad way which leadeth into destruction. And few that go the way in the straight gate. God never said the masses would go into heaven. The Bible says as far as the gospel, Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. He said, for many, not all. And when he says the testimony of the gospel of Jesus Christ for many, not all, when you think everybody's going to go to heaven, you are believing in a lie of Satan. Even the pages of the King James Bible tells you not everybody will go to heaven. The only means and way to heaven is by Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. You are not going to be in your wickedness going to a place that I am going by Jesus Christ's righteousness. If you live in your wickedness and I live in Christ's righteousness, I don't want you where I'm going. And you do not want to go where I'm going. Where I'm going, that God is holy, He said, be ye holy. So you cannot go in your unrighteousness. And then when you say, all are going to heaven. Do you mean all just the ones that are classified by you good enough? There is none that do, do it good. No, not one. So don't think, hey, being good, that's ruled out. Being good is ruled with all have sinned and come short. It's funny because when the Bible says all have come short of glory, and when you get to the gates of heaven, it says you have to be yea high. Well, how do you pass that yea high? By the righteousness of Jesus Christ. By Jesus Christ, you are raised above all the standards. Even the Pharisees, the, 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 the religion of all religions, the sect of all sects. And Jesus said, you have to be above them. And they didn't get into heaven. And to be above the Sadducees and the Pharisees would be the only way, Jesus Christ, the righteous. You need a sinless one to get to heaven, and it's not man. We're sinners. You were born into... So you can't do nothing for salvation. The foundation of your religion founded upon man is founded upon sin. And yet to be a true Christian, Christianity in the truth, outside what the media says, Christianity in the truth is founded upon the sinless one, Jesus Christ. And a true Christian, despite what the media thinks, 
is one that has put his faith and trust by his heart in the finished work of Jesus Christ alone. Nothing else, no statues, no one else, nothing else but the finished work of Jesus Christ. That's a Christian. And anybody can be a Christian. Put your faith and trust of your heart, of what Jesus Christ has done and what you cannot do. You're capable of sending spacecraft into outer space, but yet you are not capable of getting yourself to glory, heaven. You can get pictures of Pluto. You can live in the International Space Station and revolve all around the world. But you cannot save your soul. The realm that man has in his mind and thoughts is great and vast. But the realm of heaven is in holiness by God and by Jesus Christ. Listen, I'm a born-again Bible believer, and the only righteousness I have is that of God. The righteousness I hold is the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. I am not good. I'm not right. Unless I'm right in Christ. If thou shalt confess thy sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. You see, I still have that cause as a saved Christian that, hey, you're going to sin. you got to confess those sins. But Jesus Christ never sinned. Jesus Christ has never done wrong. And then He suffered for the iniquity. He suffered for your sins. He died on that cross that you might have life. And have life eternal. God is long suffering. He's not willing that any should perish. Yet, but your sins have applied His judgment. Listen to me, people. In this day and age of, of tragedy, if a tragic event happened to you between now and the time you die, you have been warned by God. There is no, I did not know. There's no ignorance. You have heard that Jesus saves and Jesus alone. And this may be your warning before the wrath and judgment falls upon God. Or it may not. You may go on living a wonderful life and die without Christ. Many have done that. And many have woke up in the gates of hell wishing, hoping that they would die. No, there's no hope in hell. Just wishing they would listen to God. Listen, they would have done right. In hell, you will be a Bible believer. Too late. In hell, you will believe Jesus is the way. Too late. And in hell, you will hear the words that we preach to you. Too late. It's amazing the memory that the rich man in hell had. In hell. As I have talked with fellow brethren, fellow brothers in the Lord this week about heaven, about knowing each other. A man in hell remembered his family. He remembered who Abraham was. Abraham was the foundation of their faith. God called Abraham out, and that rich man knew who he was. And he remembered Lazarus, the poor man, that he had nothing to do with. Listen, people, there's a possibility, a possibility, and you can throw this in the garbage can if you like. There's a possibility if you die and end up in hell, you're going to be hearing my voice. 
You're going to remember what I preached to you. And you're going to be wishing. Go back to that farmer's market after your death. Go back to them. Will you tell them? I've been a fool not to believe. I've been a fool to mock. Because that man in hell said, go tell my family about this place of torment. Those people in Nevada, if they ended up in hell, are saying, go preach. Tell them about this place. Life is not a party. Life is not a, a country music festival. Hell is not a place of a party. My friends are not here. I can't see them. The booze does not flow in hell. That's what Jesus said about a man that's in hell today. We don't even know how long he was in hell. Now, if Jesus is God and God is Jesus, which is Bible truth, the one that made hell for Satan and his angels tell us a story about a man that is there still today. He's in torment, being tormented and tormenting. And he's thinking about right now, oh, if I could just have a drop of water. If he would just go tell my family. Oh, if I've only done what Abraham told us to do. And yet the wonderfulness to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. The, body said, the Bible says if you were to die, you'll be absent from the body and present with the Lord. That moment that you pass on to eternity by Jesus Christ, no more pain. That moment that you will see the one that died for you. That moment that you to believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior, your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That moment, if the rapture were to happen in our time, you'd be called up hither. That moment that there'll be no more pain, no more sorrow, and later, no more tears. And as much as you are just ignoring the word today, right now, going about your business, when you stand before God, He's going to go about His business. He's going to ignore you. He's going to say, check the book. Not in the book? Go jump in the lake. Imagine God telling you to go to hell. Imagine God of all God. Jesus Christ telling you go to hell. But Jesus, your mother, depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But Jesus, we killed infidels. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. But Jesus did Depart from me, I never knew you. And when Jesus doesn't know you, depart from him and go to hell. It's that simple. And when God tells you to go to hell, there you go. That's the end. But it's not the end because you live all eternity in hell. It's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God, the Bible says. Our God's a consuming fire. There are no second chances once you die. 
You've been getting chances week after week after week after week after week after week after week. For three years you've had chances of hearing the gospel. I hate to have you die and go into hell after three years of preaching. Imagine three years of hearing the gospel and you still go off into hell. Now you are the fool. You will be mocked by God. I think it's Proverbs 1 or 2. It says God will even laugh at you. You've been laughing at God. You wait to the day that God laughs at you. You wait till you hear the day when God says, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. You wait till the day that God says, Go to hell. But you need not to have that happen. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's better to have God say, Well done, welcome, than go to hell. Let God be true and any man, every man a liar, the Bible says. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and that shall be...